three stages. There are three stages that I made up in my head an hour ago. Three stages. When I was trying to articulate the kind of, the pattern all of us go through when we, let's be honest, get back into Pokemon card collecting. I have no idea what I'm doing. Almost everyone, I, I, I can put on one hand people I know who started collecting Pokemon cards in January of 1999 with first edition base set never stopped over the last 25 years. There's like nobody, okay? But I know tons of people who got back into Pokemon card collecting, whether it be in 2016, 2019, 2020, 2021, or say even like a, another huge wave was last summer with uh, Scarlet and Violet 151. Loki. I know so many people that just got back in last summer. So, stage one, stage two, stage three. We all start out in stage one. The quicker you figure stuff out, you get to stage two, and then you're in stage two for a while, and then eventually you get to stage three. Okay, so what am I talking about? Stage one. Is like, your life is like a real, real breaking Nate YouTube video. And it's some positive vibe. I love Real Breaking Nate, but literally all, I, I, I absolutely love Real Breaking Nate, I love his videos, I genuinely, this is not a knock on Real Breaking Nate, but go, go to Real Breaking Nate's channel, every single video is, today we're going to, we're going to Bartels or Walgreens or Best Buy or GameStop or Target or Walmart. It's all big box retailers, sealed product, ooh, save a dollar, save five dollars, buy two, get one free. It's all this mindset of spending your money on sealed products and maybe there's an evolving skies pack in that tin. Woo! So this whole concept of spending all your giving all your money to big box retailers or the Pokemon company via sealed gambling, okay? You get back into the hobby, you're infatuated with ripping open packs and pulling something cool. And, and oh my god, I can get this thing two dollars off at at GameStop or oh my god Target's doing this blah 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 blah. This is all blah 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 That it all relates to wasting your money, but wasting slightly less Okay, so there's an entire market. There's an entire whatever just for people going crazy over saving 10% on something that is inevitably a giant waste of money. No, God, please, no, no! Okay, so buying any form of sealed product from big box retailers, from Target, Walmart, Best Buy, oh my God, this is on sale, or oh my God, this tin might have a Evolving Skies pack in it. All of that is stage one mindset. Stage one BS where you're just constantly dumping all your fun money, all your extra money, maybe it's not even extra, maybe you're using a credit card and buying this crap, okay? That is all stage one. That is all you giving your money to Target, giving your money to Walmart, giving your money to Pokemon, and getting very, 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 very little in return. That's the whole point of opening packs. You spend a lot of money, and if you're lucky, maybe you get something that slightly compensates you, but it's a net negative forever and if you are always doing stage one and all you do is just go buy boxes of crap open it up and get five percent value in hits when it's all said and done and amass tons of bulk you're a stage oneer congratulations okay emotional damn it a lot of people get into the hobby come back in whatever they're in stage one for a while and then they don't have any money left and then they burn out and now they're selling their collection or they're just done and they're over it because they never learned how to wisely spend their money on Pokemon cards, how to wisely grow a collection and how to really get the most bang for your buck. Game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Okay. Stage one is just big box retailers buying sealed stuff, opening it, getting hardly anything in return. That's stage one, okay? Now let's get in to stage two. 
stage two is you're still doing a lot of stage one but you're redirecting that money maybe at card shops or local game stores the card shops in the community in your local area that are actually card shops local game stores hold tournaments where there's actually people that you can get to know that might get to know you on a first name basis if you go there enough point is you went from patronizing target and walmart and gamestop and getting almost nothing out of the packs that you pulled to now you're at least diverting that money to local game stores to card shops to businesses in your community where at least you're funding businesses that are supporting the hobby in your local area so stage two is transitioning from the big box retailers that don't actually always have the best deals to, into card shops and local game stores okay and the reason this is stage two and not stage one is because one you are supporting now a community in your local area you are making it to where your face is recognizable by a smaller group of people that actually care the card shop owners the local game stores okay so you're already trending in the right direction and to be honest my local game store has way better deals on sealed product than target and walmart they just do they they have the best deals on booster boxes on etbs on everything you name it but here's the kicker the big box stores okay they don't have binders they don't sell singles they don't give you an opportunity to buy raw pokemon cards the card shops the lgs's they do and this is your gateway to transitioning into stage three that's why supporting your local game stores and your card shops is technically stage two spending or wasting your money because one you're getting to know people you're getting to know card shop owners and you're supporting local business that need your support target walmart walgreens gamestop they don't need your support your lgs absolutely does and they have binders that you can look through they have glass cases that you can look through they have the ability for you to buy raw po po pokemon cards <laughs> raw pokemon cards at market value all right let's get to stage three and in stage three this is where you get the absolute best deals imaginable for Pokemon cards, and I'm gonna give you my example just from like two days ago, or three days ago, whatever. So stage three is you now only buy sealed products when you absolutely need to. Maybe when a set first comes out, you're doing complete sets, and you actually need all the cards and the packs. You need the reverse hollows, you need the commons and uncommons, and yeah, hopefully you will get a couple hits or two, the point is stage three collectors set aside a specific budget for sealed product. They open it for a reason, for a purpose, and they actually keep or utilize all the cards. They're not like, oh, I didn't get anything. Throw out the pack, okay? Stage three, let me give you my example of me as stage three. I spent about 200 to $250 on sealed product with every new set that comes out. Why do I do that? Because I'm master setting every new set that comes out, which means I need all the reverse hollows. And to be honest, I might start collecting all the commons and commons, put them in my, my sets as well. The point is every single pack has cards that I need in it. So it makes sense for me to actually buy packs because I need everything in there. So there's a huge value return because it's all going into a binder, okay? Once I hit that 200, $250 mark and I start getting a bunch of reverse holo duplicates, then it is just truly starting starting to become a gamble waste of money. Now it's like, all right, I need these like really expensive IRs, SIRs, probably not gonna get them. From that point forward, after that $200 magic mark for me, that's when I know, hands down, it is way more financially beneficial for me to switch to purchasing cards raw. But here's, here's where everyone knows purchasing cards raw rather than out of packs is more financially lucrative and way less of a, a, a money dump, right? Here's what I'm going to get to as far as the value of this video and what happened to me a few days ago. So, 
buying your cards raw at market value when, t when the timing is right, whether it be, you know, maybe the new set came out just now. So now you go back to three months ago and you start buying some of those hits you still need raw at market value. And again, at your local game store or hobby shop or whatever, point is stage two collectors do a very good job in area familiarization and figuring out how many shops they have in their area, how many antique consignment shops, LGSs, who has what, who has new, near mint stuff, like newer stuff, where's a good place to go for vintage. The point is you're buying it raw and in person and you're patronizing your local game store, your network, your community in your area, okay? But here's the top tier end game of saving money and getting the most bang for your buck for Pokemon cards. This is it, this is the point of the video, and this is the example I have from this weekend. The number one, hands down, best way, and it doesn't matter what the example is, whether you're talking PSA graded slabs, raw cards, anything, is card conventions. And let me stop you right now. You are either someone who has been to many card conventions and you already know what I'm talking about and you know I'm right, or you're someone who's an armchair quarterbacker who just kind of does everything from the sidelines. You order all your cards online, or you know, you maybe, maybe you like um, only do big box retailer stuff, so you're like still in stage one. The point is, card conventions. If you have never been to one, you have no idea how right I am. You have no idea how, how like, I cannot tell you enough how incredible of deals you can get left and right all day long. Spend six hours at a card convention, a card show. It is insane how much value you can walk out of that convention with. Like, oh my god. And let me stop you right now. I get it now. If you think, if you're someone who's like, oh, there's only one convention a year in my area, and I'm not quite sure, look again. The amount of annual and semi-annual card shows, card conventions, whatever, card parties, this and that, local, there are so many that are showing up like in your local area that I guarantee you there's one or two that you didn't even know were going on in your area that you just you just don't know about yet because they're so new, so new so my advice to you go to your local lgs go to your local card shop you will see flyers for events coming up in the next coming week or months that your card shop your L lgs will have a booth at and you can just ask them hey all right so there's this one what other conventions are there can you can you just tell me what conventions are in my area and just by doing a little investigation whether it be at a card shop or online googling you, you might be surprised how many card shows are in your local area within driving distance just this upcoming summer alone, okay? And so for me personally, I went to TCG Topia 2 last weekend in my local area, and I brought with me $145 cash. That's it. That was my limit. And then, but here's the thing. I brought a half-empty box of slabs, it had 10 Pokemon slabs in it, they're all PSA, I think almost all of them were Gem Mint 10s except for a couple Pikachus, but all these slabs were listed on my eBay store for like the last two months, uh, not selling at all. These are leftover 10 slabs that are, yeah, they're PSA 10, yeah, they're decent cards, but they're all cards that I listed for like 20 to $35 that I was making almost zero profit on, even though they were Gem Mint 10. These were like Japanese ARs from like Triplet B and stuff from last year, just, you know, like illustration rares, but Japanese. You know, I got a couple character hyper rares. It was mostly Japanese. They were all nice slabs, but they were listed for 25, 30 bucks on my eBay store and they were not selling at all. So you know what? I had a very good experience trading in some slabs at the last event that I went to, the last con uh, conference or whatever. And so I was like, all right, let's let's bring some more slabs. Let's really let's really see. So basically, what I did, I brought this half-empty box of slabs with me, and just throughout, you know, the first two hours, I was kind of scoping out each each booth, and if they had slabs, you know, when the when the booth vendor wasn't busy, just be like, hey, uh, I got some fresh slabs I graded that. Uh, you know, I don't know if you do trade-in, but I was just looking to see maybe if you'd be interested in my slabs. And yeah, you know, I got shot down a couple times. Like, one guy was like, 
no, I'm not interested in slabs, or, yeah, yeah, these are great, except they're all Japanese, and I would really like English, so I'm not interested. Another guy was just like, yeah, but not till the end of the day, so I don't even want to look. The point is, I just kind of waited till the time was right, and eventually I talked to the right person. I was like, hey, how you doing? He's like, hey, what's up, dude? And I was like, hey, I got a box of slabs in my backpack. They're all kind of fresh. I graded them, you know, whatever, no big deal. If you want to look, see if you want to give me store credit. Dude sits down. Ten minutes later, he goes, I can give you 220 cash or 300 store credit. Damn! And this guy, right next to him in his booth, had every Pokemon, every Scarlet and Violet 151 banger that I needed. And he just told me he'd give me $300 store credit for slabs that I had listed on my eBay store for a grand total of $240 and weren't selling. The leftover slabs from previous PSA subs that weren't selling, and even if I did sell them after taxes and fees and all that stuff on eBay, I might have walked away with $180 cash in my pocket, but again, these weren't selling. This guy gave me $300 store credit at a card show for my half empty box of slabs. So I got $300 store credit plus my 140 cash I walked in. So that's like 440, but I walked out with like $560 worth of cards. So I repeat some, not junk slabs, but might as well be like junk slabs, right? 10 junk slabs, 140 bucks. I transfer that into $560 worth of modern bangers, okay? So, moral of the story, get out of stage one. Stop giving your money to big box retailers. If anything, get into stage two, give your money to your local card shops, your local game stores. That's a way better thing, okay? They need your money more than Target does or Best Buy or Walmart. Okay? Support your community, make yourself known, show your face in your local card shops. When you get there, talk to them about local events, card shows that they'll be attending or that they know are around. Figure that out. Save your money, grab your extra slabs that you don't maybe care about anymore. Maybe you have an eBay store like me and you have some slabs that aren't selling. Throw them in a box, bring them with you to the next card shop. Be patient, be a little outgoing, be respectful, talk to enough vendors, you will be dumbfounded by how much store credit you can get, which you can then parlay into then getting deals on raw cards. So that's the concept, guys. Fresh slabs, store credit, raw cards. There is a massive just differential in the value you get. Something about trading in mint raw slabs that aren't even worth that much for raw cards, you, the person that had the slabs, end up getting like this massive trade difference. Okay? So again, get out of stage one. Stop buying big box retail crap. Get into stage two. Become a member of your community via stage two LGSs and card shops. Transition into stage three and start going to card conventions. Go to card shows and start making deals because you will be so blown away by the amount of deals you will get at card shows. These guys are selling so many cards left and right that, oh, that's a $30 Paldean Fates Charmander or, Charmander or whatever, 20 bucks. Yeah, just sure, 20 cash, boom, easy. Oh, you, you want the that Zapdos SIR? Oh, it says it's 36 bucks. Here, 28. Boom. You do that all day long. You end up saving so much money on so many expensive cards. It's just mind-boggling. And they don't care. Because these card shop owners, when they're at events, this is like the Super Bowl for them. They are making tons of money, tons of deals left and right. It is no big deal at all. Just quickly selling you a raw card for literally 30% off of market value. You know, like they, they, it happens all the time just left and right at card shops they're just turning and burning and they just want to sell this stuff and it could be a card they just got five minutes ago 
Like literally, I spent an hour looking for a Charmander baby shiny. The last hour I was I was at my last convention. Literally asked everybody, and one guy was like, "Boom! I just got this Charmander like 10 minutes ago. You want it? 20? What was it? 20 bucks? I think I paid him 20, and it's like a 23, 24 dollar card. Boom! Perfect condition, beautiful Charmander. All day long I was getting deals at this this card show. Just do it, guys. Please become a bigger member of your community and go to card shows. Go to card shops and start making deals. Deuces.